Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final match of the first day of our stream coverage of the Division 2 New Zealand Ultimate Championships. We have an exciting match up for you between Zodiac from Auckland and the Quantum Quokkas from here in Christchurch. Speaking of here in Christchurch, we are, as uh, we so often seem to be, at Bob Dean's Field, or Bruce Dean if you know him very well, in Hagley Park. Uh, in Christchurch, my name as always is Blair Munro. I'm Kelsey Bielek. Who's Bruce Dean? <laughs> <laughs> Br Br Bruce Dean is, is uh, Bob Dean's friend. Um, maybe. Maybe. Anyway, so two two very exciting matches uh, that we've got here for you. So Zodiac from Auckland, who will be playing out of the light kit, uh, versus the Quantum Quokkas playing out of the dark. So it looks like Quantum Quokkas will be starting on the left-hand side of your screen. You'll see them on screen now. Wow, 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 wow. Quantum Quokkas, interestingly, again, Blair, as you mentioned, they're a team from Christ church interesting to name your team after an animal from australia we do have a few australian teams mainly playing in the opens division here also love to see this matchup this is the reason we're coming to nats and seeing these games we've got christchurch versus auckland two ends of the country this is south island versus north here and and you know two beautiful clubs that have been really involved and focused on growth within the ultimate community um zodiac has done such a great job you know in the auckland scene bringing up talent really focusing on the teamwork and and they've got a depth of players as well who've represented New Zealand on the international stage many times, as well as a lot of young and upcoming players. Similar uh, along the Quantum Quokkas, one thing I'm really looking forward to is, is, is a really competitive game, also really highly spirited. A lot of stoke, a lot of growth and energy from both teams. And so we have some information uh, about Zodiac's performance in the tournament so far. So from my understanding, they have come off uh, the back of three wins in day one, hoping to make it a fourth. Um, we had some information to suggest that Quantum Quokkas were 1-1 one and one, uh, prior to their most recent match against the Bay Ladies, but we do not yet have results for you. We can also confirm that um, our friend Loy, uh, in the very first game of the day, um, his ankle is fine. I meant to say oh, that a couple of games ago. So good to hear. It was, a, it was a great, if go back and watch it, it was an absolute great bid, but he just came down a little bit unsure on that ankle. He's now, doing all right. With conditions today or this afternoon, what we're seeing, it's it's changed over the course of the day. We've had some light breezes, but for the most part, it's it's pretty calm. The sun was out before, but it's a little bit overcast, so just taking care of any glare that might be in the player's eyes. So it's so a little bit of breeze, cool temperatures. This is really the perfect perfect conditions for outdoor ultimate frisbee. So so interesting to see a zone coming out on offense. I, I actually really love that strategy. Sorry, zone coming out on defense. So there's a lot of pressure around the disc. Um, and, and yeah, right now Quokka is really responding with, with some calm offense. Silva with the disc right now, commanding where she wants to see the disc. Recently named on the New Zealand women's masters team. And now Lawson with the disc, working with Silva, supported by Hidead in the down in the upfield space. We've also got Harris. So it's almost four handlers back, four people around the desk, and you've got three developing uh, work in the downfield space. And interesting to have that strategy. You know, four handlers back is not a bad idea by any means, but what it really does, an over-the-top... Silva's not able to like uh, get hands to it. Well, gets hands to it, but not able to secure it, cutting back for that disc. We see Julia Ford. He did runs through with a D. It looks like it's no contest on that foul call. So yeah, accepted. Uh, look, uh, yeah, we'll see again. Ford looking for battle. He did on a uh, aggressive run through, which you do love to see, but not when there's contact with it. Bradley getting a hand underneath that. Another thing, set, set, set. Comms from the sideline talking about setting the zone, ensuring that that's on. Melissa Martell, looks like she's the, the, the chase or the bunny on there, also recently named on the New Zealand Women's Masters team. Awesome to see that, you know, despite 
you know, despite playing at the Master Stage, she's the one who's doing arguably here the most running on the team, chasing the disc. She's the mark, following wherever the disc goes, and she's the one who's starting the stall. So it's Tia Lawson working with Harris, working with Hider Silva as a support on that near sideline. They're struggling to get around those three players parked up around the desk really yeah. trying to shut everything down and a really really close a lot of the defenders close downfield indicating here now that he there is able to break through downfield you know it's off to the races defense so really needs to accommodate because otherwise it's just that deep deep there's so much space in the middle here once they can break past that you know that's the mission that's the challenge but once they can break past that it will be so easy to just continue down the field yeah, so we see harris now Working with Lawson, working with Hider, chipping straight through, looking for Chin to Silva. There's a disproportionate number of left-handers on the field at the moment, if you can see, but Harris not able to get that one in hand. We are still sitting at nil all. This is a game to 13. We're going to see Zodiac take possession of the disc. It's Bianca Mercer uh, with the disc. A huge threat, decides to put a long one up, looking for Martel. Slightly overcooked on that one. I think maybe there was a little bit of miscommunication. Maybe Martel wasn't expecting the disc to come over that near sideline shoulder. So it's going to give the Quantum Quackers a long field ahead of them if they want to work and put that first point on the board. We've got Hider with the disc as Ding Larson, Martel, and Murray are applying that early pressure. Harris finds the disc this time, goes over the top of Hider. Looks like a bit of an air bounce on that. It, it went down and the nose just took, it just caught up. It, it went up and, yeah, and floated over the expecting hands, I think, that it was aimed to originally fly into. Yeah, we're going to see Ford pick up to initiate. She's faking across the field. Using Engaging the height. Mercer. Engaging Mercer, oh going around. A quick oh one, two. And that looks like that's going to be bookends for Bartle as well, right? Keep yeah. in mind that that, that disc you mentioned before that had a little bit of air bounce, Bartle was the one who got underneath it and prevented uh, any of the Quantum Quackers taking a second, second attempt. So that's a defensive play and then closing out the same point, which is just fantastic to see. So Zodiac, 3-0 and today, going up by one over Quantum Quackers. A fantastic start to what is going to be the last and hopefully the most exciting match of the day for the Division 2 New Zealand Ultimate Championships in Christchurch. One more time, some some beautiful flow in that, that last part of the point. I love the handler engagement followed by the cut from, from the, out of the stack. The little bit of stagnancy as Ford is trying to figure out where options are, fakes off a look, engages the dump, and finding that reset. And what a great cut. It's it's just break side. Mercer's staying on the break side, but you know, just changing the angle enough such that Ford can can throw it just as, as a slight inside out across to the break side. Um, yeah, just just nice vision, nice execution. Good point to Zodiac. And so it looks like we are going to see Aisha with the disc for the pull. And also, you know, great to see coaches on both ends as well. We've got Ty Lawson and Joshua Chin coaching, just offering some feedback, some guidance from the sideline for the Quakas, discussing, you know, what, what to expect, what the plan might be on offense for this point looking ahead. He there with her hand up, indicating that they are ready to receive the pull. Isha launching it downfield. Oh, looking for a great breakthrough, which is a challenge around a mark like Ng. Looks like there's been a call on the field, a pick. And when you're looking at the stack there, the cluster of people, it's not surprising. Given the number of bodies in the same space, it, it can be difficult to avoid contact if, you, if the person that you're marking, that, you, that you're chasing, is, you know, is running through any of that cluster of bodies. Want to explain further, Blair? What, what is a pick? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I mean, the biggest thing with regards to Ultimate is that it's a non-contact sport and needs to be treated as such. What that means is that players need to be very mindful when they're making cuts that they aren't picking paths where the movement or positioning of other players is going to impede their defender's ability to follow them appropriately. Uh, so, in this case, players are allowed to catch up to where they reasonably think they would have been. A great swat away by Parker, who wants to put it up for Ng. Decides against it. And Parker slicing it off across the field, finding Ng under. Back through to Parker. Puts one up. Pass. 
It was just a give go, give go. That was a Parker Ng show. You know, they played together in 2016 on Fight City, the New Zealand women's team, and and they're both, they're both such strong players with such such strong background as well. Parker is she's represented New Zealand on so many levels for again she's with whether in Auckland um, winning national championships at the World Championships and Ing as well she's such a squirrely player her agility um, her safe hands her acceleration um, such a dynamic duo working the disc down the field together there yeah I think dynamic duo is the key I mean I if if it were anyone other than Ing the, the question has to be asked as to whether or not they would have been able to catch it that throw was very contestable particularly um, just just as high and as sort of unstably as that came out. So great work by Ing to secure that and put a second point on the board for Zodiac. Now it's up to Quokka's. I mean, last point also maintained through this point to respond to that. You know, they're, they're, they came out on offense last point, out on offense this point. So what's the plan going to be? I think a few bobbles and connections along with some tenacious defense that Zodiac is throwing down. We see... Um, Valenti with disc in hand. She's about to pull down field. Another person recently named on the New Zealand Women's Masters teams. And shout out to sisters Sabrina and Alicia who are tuning in. We've heard from the States from across the pond to see their sister play, cheer her on. And she launches a pull down field what to a, the Quokkas. What a good shot. Pushing towards that far sideline. We're going to see Harris again, supported by Hider as Johnson applies that early pressure on the mark. Along with Parker. Nice movement. Silva, a little bit unstable on the landing. I love that connection, it, though. De Serval yeah. with the disc. Looks back, finds Hidere, works across to Harris, who goes low to scoop it off the grass. Threads one through, and it's going to get eaten up. I by Crystal Kane. Great vision by Kane there. And now she's, she's catching it and launching it. Is Bradley going to get there? Yes, but it's not in bounds yet. Well, it is in bounds rather, but it's not in the end zone. So the point still continues. Martel with a great cross cut gets looked off. Aisha does the same. Bradley looking at options. Looks back, finds Kane, goes Open wide, cross field. Look. First and last touches on the mm. disc for that point for Valenti. Definitely. Great work. Um, now, a charitable interpretation. She's doing that for her sisters. A perhaps her. less charitable interpretation. She's doing that at her sisters. <laughs> Either way, fantastic work by Kisa Valenti. Uh, some excellent work on that just to close that point out. Taking Zodiac to a 3-0 lead over the Quantum Quarkers, hoping for their fourth win of the game. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I wanted to comment on that open side look there as well was, and I've mentioned this in previous points, but we're on the far sideline swinging back to the middle and and it's easy to get caught up in what's happening right in front of you but not the case for Kane as she sees Valenti streaking to the side of the field you know vision is is everywhere it's not just focused on what's in front of her Valenti really capitalizing on that open space moving into the space where nobody else is only her ability to run onto the disc great catch just a great take there also style points for the the, the matching hair and jersey color we see fans from, from across all teams, as well as some volunteers there hanging out in the grass. Big thank you to the volunteers, as well as um, Christchurch Ultimate for making this event happen. It takes a community to bring a tournament together. You know, it takes a village to raise a child, but, a, but an entire Ultimate community to put on an event like this. Now the disc goes up. We've got Quantum Conkers once again on offense. What can they do now? They're three points behind. What can they do to cinch a point on the board? I've been really enjoying a lot of the connections they're making. Some baubles have been resulting in turnovers, and this zone that Zodiac's been throwing has been really effective, just increasing the number of touches on the disc. You know, while the passes aren't tricky, they're relatively straightforward. The more times you throw and catch a disc, you know, the, the more likely you are to eventually just bobble it. And so Lawson doing a huge amount of work for the Quantum Quokkas. We're seeing Lee trying to make herself available as support on the near sideline, getting looked off in favor of the far sideline. Still going to be Lawson. 
And, and that's what I'm talking about there. Unfortunately, again, just the increased frequency, even if the swings and the throws you're making are relatively straightforward, it just increases the likelihood of a bobble happening. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, we just see that, that result in a turnover there. Ford pushing aggressively, using the height to guarantee that upline cut from Zing. Huge touch there by Tan to get the uh, the tip, just pushing it over the heads of the receiver. I Great work that. there on defense. She watches, she takes to the skies to hit it out of the path. And Parker is not going to be able to get to that one in the end, which is great. That's, that's what the Quantum Quackers need. Mm. Exactly, to have another chance on offense. So so now it's a matter of what's happening with the zone here. How do they unlock it? I think that, that they need to maintain this movement of those swings here, potentially gaining a few more meters down the sideline. Beautiful. Zing with a great intercept. Yeah, nice inside out straight. I think just a, a misfire with direction. So yeah, I have an opportunity here. Yeah. Ford. Well within the danger zone, we know that she's got a lot of range in terms of her throws, a lot of capability, and with the height as well, the ability to really move around a mark, which is fantastic. A lot of height on that one. Ooh, not going to be able to pull that one down. Also, just a shout-out to Jenna Mocker there. Um who has done so much work in the New Zealand women's ultimate space with organizing, supporting, connecting, liaising, administration out here representing, you know, her, her team in Auckland as well. Um, she's also represented New Zealand on the, on the world stage, I think, multiple times. But, but yeah, just a shout out there. So we're seeing a zone from Zodiac, Zone Diac even. We had Tinas up front really applying a huge amount of pressure uh, on the on the front of the zone there, uh, and they're able to generate that turn. A great cut across from Jenny Parker to close that one out, putting Zodiac up by four. Jenny Parker with the points. Now Quaka is back at it. What what's the solution? What are you going to do? I think we've seen that that great defensive play. You know, we we know they can come out here on defense, but I think offensively is where they're in their heads. They need to find the key to unlock the zone. That's always the way it is with a zone with match defense. I mean, you're you're working to get open, you're working to make the connections, but with a zone, how do you unlock you know what what's happening and how you're being shut down. We saw before they have made some really nice movement, really nice swings with those almost four handlers back. And, um, you know, maybe struggling a little bit to make those connections on the field, just like our friends over on the path, struggling to push that card along. But but they, I think once they push past that line of defenders, is when they, they, I'd love to see them continuing with that movement. They've been really safe with their decision making, safe with their throws, and, and I, yeah, I think, I think it's just a matter of, of continuing that, but also, you know, finding that, that golden key. Unlock the gate, unlock the zone, unlock the points, unlock the win. That's how it happens. Okay, and so we are gonna see, uh, not really a surprise, Bianca Mercer with the disc for the pole. Again, just such a phenomenal athlete. Um, huge amount of range and a great cornerstone to really kind of build a handler core around. Um, we've seen her utilize incredibly well in the women's division. We've also seen her play uh, a couple of seasons in the open division where she is perhaps un definitely underutilized. Um, so it's really, really great to just see her out in her element as they come down to zone defense against the Quantum Quackers. Nice movement now. Finding the open players. What a take! Yeah. De Serville with a one hand somehow backspin grab. I mean, there's, there aren't enough words in the English language really to string together to appropriately describe that disc as Harris fires towards the near sideline for Leslie, chipping one back through to Hider. Nice wide open hands looking for Chen. Back to Hider, we're right close to the end zone. It's De Serville with, uh, Leslie with the disc. And he dared with wow. the score. Quantum Quackers are on the board. The score the is board. now 4-1 in favor of Zodiac. Eight, that's it. That's exactly what they needed. You know, unlocking the zone. And at the end of the day, it was just those clean passes. I think ultimately increasing the frequency of the passes and likelihood of turning it over, it was just getting to the point where they were. You know, they were just making those mistakes and it, and it was resulting in a turnover. But, but here's so good to see them clean it up a little bit, you know, keep it in their hands, convert that to a point 
There's Hider as she passes back to Leslie a and Hider with the point. That was certainly a choice. Uh, I mean, Martel was right in the way of that one. We're going to see that again. That shot across to Hider, and then we're seeing the disc come back to Leslie. Martel right there, mm. slipped underneath her arm, managing to get that grab. 17 on 17. Woo! What a matchup. And it comes away in favor of Hider, putting one on the board for the Quantum Quark as this game mm. to 13 has just been busted wide open. No doubt. Valenti with hand up indicating that Zodiac is ready to receive. Leslie with the pull. She just had the assist. Yeah, now she's launching it downfield. Throwing a cannon out there. Aisha to Ford to Valenti. Valenti with cheeky smile on her face. Playing with joy. Bradley finding that open player in the middle of the field. Tinas looking forward. Puts one out to Ford. The momentum taking them just that much closer to the end zone. There's a looking yep. for options. Finding Valenti behind. Looks like they're giving up that break side throw. Silva says not today. Well, I mean, you have to, you've, you've got to respect the attempt. Anyone who's going to throw a hammer, they've, they've got my vote. Absolutely. Let's see that one more time. Valenti, and you see that, that open side, sorry, the break side option open up. I understand why she wanted to put that up, but Silva, she's so fast, so furious. She's everywhere on the field and easily cleans it up. Giving Quokka's another chance on offense. And there's a match defense now that Zodiac's throwing. Now to conversion zone. Silva with the disc. Assessing options and resets. They're, they're on the sideline. Oh, a launch deep. And it, maybe a bit of a misread from Chin. You know, she, she paused. She paused there, seeing it coming down to her, and then and then the disc, you know, just sailed a little bit farther. I think if she would have kept the wheels going, she could have definitely caught up with it. But but it, uh, challenging to read the disc when it's coming down like that. And Zodiac is back on offense. We've got Aisha picking up. So bringing the disc to the front of the zone, we've got Bradley pushing deep immediately. A classic zone offense. That is the triangle cutting. It was a, I mean, it was a great return cut. I think uh, we had Chin right on her shoulder, mm. uh, which just made the window a little bit tighter to hit. But we've managed to generate the turn going back the other way. Back, yeah. How fast was that? Check your neck for whiplash, folks. And it's Parker with the disc. Chips one around to Kane. Winds up the forehand. Sets it over wow. the top to Bradley. Chin's not going to get a sniff of it this time. Ford with a great cut. Tina's nice. there, oh. but it's swatted out by Mika Leslie. Leslie, she's everywhere. What a great play. Looking for Silva deep and opting for the safe swing. Really nice decision making there. Finds Harris, goes up and around to Lee as Bradley tries to get in position, overthrowing there, Silva. Oh. oh, Camila Silva putting some great speed on. She's uh, so fast. Unfortunately, but it was just too far. Valenti, she's slowly walking back to the disc. She's giving people a breather, a time to reset. She's giving people, especially Zodiac, a chance to set up in their offensive flow. And we're seeing right off the bat that classic triangle cutting. Aisha Oops. trying to get free, and Tinas is going to be able to get in front of it this time with a big wind-up forehand, trying to push the line, looking for Aisha, goes back. Can they use the width of the field? Valenti wide open. We've got Kane really trying to push that up line, calling them moving out. Ooh. Foul a foul call. was called. I think Valenti reaching out in front, um, but trying to make an attempt. And then the run through continued from the defender. We'll see yeah. that again. So there's fakes and then an open side look. So the question is, did she hit her hands there? Or did Valenti have control of the disc? What do you guys think at home? Difficult to tell from that footage from that replay here. We see from another angle. Uh, 
and helpful here. So spirit of the game, again, ultimate frisbee is self-refereed sport. So it's up to the players in the field to determine, you know, they're, they're applying the rules, knowledge, and use. This isn't just learning the theory at home. They're applying it during the game as it's happening. And and if a conversation isn't isn't finished up soon, then it's up to the spirit captain can definitely get involved. We see Ford supporting with the conversation. They're weighing in. The disc goes back to the thrower, indicating that it was contested. Yeah, so players being unable to uh, make a determination. Uh, they'll reset to the last uncontested play, which means Aisha had the disc on the near sideline. Bradley a little bit trapped, heavily pressured. Parker is able so to get it over chin. She's those one-handed catches. She's, she's got it. Aisha are really aggressive with the upline cut, trying to get a shoulder around Harris. It's back to Valenti, goes through Kane over Silva. Interesting to see a changing mark here. Uh, we're seeing some forehand, some backhand. I'm not sure if that's the intention. Of, of what Quakas are throwing. It's it's definitely something we're seeing from the sideline, though. Ford really trying to crack open that midfield. Drops a few yards to keep the stall count low, giving the disc back to Valenti. We've got Parker making an aggressive cut. Stays in front of Chen on defense, who's starting to look a little bit gassed. Puts a big floaty backhand out to Tinas for the score. Was, I'm not sure if that was a, a break or an open side look. Just based on the mark, it looks like it could have been uh, an open side look, but you know, maybe the force was middle at that point. It's an interesting strategy to prevent downfield cuts and continuations um, on offense when, when the force is middle. A great, great hawk by Jenny Parker, though. Great catch in the end zone, wide open, and another point on the board for Zodiac. So we're going to get another chance to see that. Yeah, it looks like that would have been a break. Uh, sorry, no, that, yeah, that would have been a, br a break throw. And then the open the open side force. But, but you know, it. it not sure what, what the, the I, was. I have to wonder, looking back, whether or not the force that Chin set up on Parker was the right one. We can see there there's a forehand force. And so Chin's actually overcommitted and gone to the wrong side. So they've given up that break throw to really allow that corner wide open. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, you know, to take away or, again, potentially a force middle. Either way, great throw, great catch. Another point for Zodiac. So so something definitely to consider, though. If it was the strategy, is that something that you want to keep doing? Potentially, yes. You know, maybe that was exactly what you were trying to force. Or potentially not. You know, that's exactly what you were trying to stop. Yeah, I mean, went awry. I mean I've, happened, I've had it happen on a couple of teams I've played where, as a general rule, all of the downfielders commit to, say, a forehand force. They'll take away that side of the field. But the marker starts on a backhand. Uh, for the a count of three and then switches sides and switches mm. back and you can sort of mix things up a little bit to, to just throw off the rhythm of the team trying to connect their offense. And, and and that's totally fine. It's the same as a zone when you're forcing options and you say, you know what, this is what we want to see when that's what the team is doing and that's what they give you. It's just, it, it honestly goes according to plan. We're seeing great movements, some nice swings. This is this is classic to what Quakas are showing us. Some nice pop passes, nice quick movement, a lot of a lot of nice unders and swing passes. So so they're just, just classic for what we're seeing with their offense right now, doing a really great job of, again, moving the disc in small spaces safely and quickly. Yeah, seeing Zodiac switch back to that person defense, trying to isolate those individual matchups, yes! but he did with the disc. Oh, Not no. able to get that one jumped there in, but they're going to walk away with it regardless. That's Quantum Quokka's second point on the board, bringing us to a 5-2 game. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting thing. We saw them switch up, and I think recognizing that Zodiac were playing at sort of strict match defense just as that wind is starting to pick up as well. That strict match defense maybe gave them the opportunities that they needed. So we'll see whether or not Zodiac decide they want to make an adjustment to that or continue with that match defense. The zone has worked incredibly well for them, particularly when you look at the roster, you look at the history, and you also look at the coaching um, from Zev Fishman, who I think as a coach just does a fantastic job of really trying to connect with his players and understand what their strengths are and, and build a strategy around that rather than trying to force his players to fit into some idea that he's already got. Just, just... It's, it's really it's what coaching should be. Um, Absolutely. We've heard a lot of good things from a lot of the players. Um, knowing knowing Zev Fishman as a, as a player and a coach himself as well, background in teaching, um, really, yeah, yeah, really doing a great job. So we're going to see what happens now. We've got Tina Ng, Zeng, Parker, Martel, Kane on the field for Zodiac. Quantum and Quokkas to come out on defense. We've seen 
Leslie with the disc. She's been taking quite a few of these pulls. It's been so impressive to see the ways in which she's been making plays as well, offensively, defensively, making, you know, the assist for the first points, really moving it so well on offense. And here she is with a, a wonderful pull again. What makes a wonderful pull? Well, it goes as far as you can, but also it's floaty. It gives this defense, we see so much energy and legs right now from the Quokkas as they run down to chase it down. Ing Tapaka yet again. Zodiac's off to the races as well as they're just moving it. You know, now they're, how did they already get across the halfway point? We but are seeing Quantum Quokkas throw that zone. It's Yudas Ng looking for Tinas. Not able to get it quite in bounds. Chips one oh. through. That's a little bit of a misconnection there, but that's what the Quantum Quokkas need. They want to close that gap. Their zone defense was working really well. It looked like uh, sort of a, a split trying to keep those matchups relatively close on the handlers while keeping a sort of a more of a scramble in the in the downfield space, just looking to pick up cutters as they move through places. We've got Hidel against Ng now. Manages to get the reset, finds Leslie. Back around, Hidel chasing, 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 but it's eaten up instead by De Serville, and then a pick has been called in the downfield. So a few things that, that Quokkas could do if they wanted to clean this up is uh, they could focus on clearing out of the space that they've cut into, uh, maybe making more spacing in the stack so that people aren't standing as close to each other. There, there are a few things you can do to, to, to clear up picks. We haven't seen too many. We've seen, we've seen a few calls on the field, but just maybe a few things if they wanted to, to try to prevent that a bit more. Nonetheless, it's not... It's not the end of the world. It, it involves a stoppage and, and clean up. What a great break. It took a lot of effort there, a lot of coordination from the Quokkas through Leslie and Torsen because we were just seeing a loss from other. We were seeing such aggressive defense from Eng and then another run through from Tinas. It's just fantastic to see. So we're going to see Parker losing yards but getting position for a comfortable swing towards the far sideline. Contested, but Kane after three attempts is going to be able to keep that one off the turf. Laser show straight through the hands of Martel and a turnover to give Quokkas back the disc. We have Leslie. He did. An uncharacteristic drop. A very uncharacteristic. We've seen such fantastic work from Hidel during this game alone. Just the, the foot speed, the aggressive acceleration, good secure hands. Uh, I, I was as surprised as you to see that one hit turf, but we're going to have Zeng pick up the disc. Find Parker right on the doorstep. Chips over. Martel again not able to secure that one. Also, the, the, the high release, I think, I think, uh, you know, more likely to go awry than, you, you know, there was, there was, when you do a high release, you can get away with less touch on the disc. It's a little bit gusty at times, so it could have messed with that a little bit more, though. He did, pushing through, finding Silva, continues through. Oh, putting it too far for Silva to reel in. It's going to be Zing and Kane. We're seeing a vertical stack. All the players in a vertical line trying to create two long channels down the far end near sidelines for Zodiac to attack into. We've got Ng on a great undercut. Manages to get separation from Leslie. Puts a big shot up. Looking for Parker, manages to find it. We've got Martel on the far sideline, Tinas on the near sideline, Lee in the middle. Switching Mark again. You know, backhand for the first few seconds, now she's forcing forehand. Parker finding the swing to Kane. Whoa! A interesting choice of throw. It came out really, really high, but turned over early. I'm not sure that was intentional. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to tell what, what the intention was there. It gives... Quok has another chance on offense. He did with the disc. And we've got we've got a vertical stack downfield. They definitely see some good spacing there. They're, they're aware of the picks and working to prevent those. Kane is doing quite a bit of poaching on Camden. Looks like a timeout has been called by the Quokkas. Mm. A great call this point in particular has been going on for a little while. So we're just going to take a short break while these teams huddle up, maybe discuss some strategies, see what kind of adjustments they want to make. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very, very exciting match, Kelsey, and mm -hmm. I'm really excited to watch it continue very shortly. See you soon.
so we are back folks uh for what's gonna be the thrilling conclusion of the first half of the final game of our streaming coverage for the division two new zealand Northern championships we have zodiac from auckland currently three and oh up by three points against the quantum quackers with an undetermined record we know they're at least one and one um, so they're not undefeated but they're also um they're not whatever the opposite of undefeated is <laughs> uh just great to hear now Kelsey, it's one of those things that we often try and draw some attention to when we see teams take a timeout like this. They've called a timeout, and in this case it was Quokkas who called the timeout. He mm -hmm. dare was bringing the disc up to the front of the zone after a turnover. What do you what do you think the focus or the, the, the purpose of that timeout was? I, th I think potentially a few purposes. I think that relatively just looking at both these clubs, Zodiac is, is well tenured. They, they've been around for, for a really long time, definitely at least since 2015, if not sooner. Meanwhile, Quakas, this is their first season as a club together, and I think reflected by a lot of the upcoming talent in Christchurch. He did as one of the more tenured players on the team. She's got a lot of experience under her belt in here. I think she called a timeout just recognizing that there have been a few turnovers at that point. They, Quakas have, have put a few points on the board. They've really shown what they can do when they're playing well you know that 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 they're they're not playing as well as they could right now so taking a time out for your own team allows you to focus on what you can do control the controllables there's something that you can't control the wind the rain there's <laughs> there's minimal wind and not much rain but you can't control the other team what you can control is how you're playing so i think Hyder was recognizing that recognizing a few of the turnovers and allowing her team to take some time to introspectively look at what they're capable of and what their plan is and how they can continue bringing their best frisbee selves out on the field right now Okay, so we see the Quantum Quark is establishing that same vertical stack, trying to create those channels on the near and far sideline for their attack. We're Looks seeing Zodiac looking to state up a bracket. Um, so what we can see is they've then set up in, in terms of defense. They've got a player on the mark and around the mark. Uh, and a violation called as, as Tia Lawson tries to take a step before the disc has actually been called live. I love this this timeout strategy defensively you know when offense is called a timeout and they're putting something on the board changing just making the slightest change in your defensive play changing the force throwing a zone you can you can change what you're doing and i think it's so smart and i really like that they're taking this time out to say you know we're going to take the time to discuss what exactly we're going to play what positions people are going to be in and how we're going to stop that whatever offense they're going to put out there oh the serval again managing she's, to get another touch on the desk she's such a strong player on the team it's been such a privilege to watch her working with everyone else she's making just she's everywhere <laughs> a long shot ah oh. oh, trying to back pit to get underneath it what a great chase by de Serval again like yeah. came out of nowhere to, to, to be in a decent position Definitely. if there had been just a little bit more float on that desk Voon, definitely an open player on the wing over there, but as you said, DeServal really looking to support her teammate, providing that backup. Charging under, but another player for Quokka's Leslie. We've seen her everywhere as she gets that defensive play. He dare back to Leslie, who's looking for the option. And what a take by DeServal for the score. I love this. I love this player. I, and this is why he dare called the timeout, not to give her full credit of the points that, that Leslie just assisted to DeServal. But, but, you know, that's exactly why you take a timeout and what you want to see result from it. And it wasn't just that assist. Keep in mind, it was that huge run through D. Yes. That was what swung the momentum so heavily in favor. Not just that it was a run through D, like, quite often, if you run through the D and you hit the disc and it finds the turf, you your instinct as a defender is, okay, I'm going to continue over. I'm going to run past the disc and set something up. And then quite often, the, t the other team has the opportunity to respond by the time your offensive, I guess, cornerstone has picked up that disc. Now, in an instance like this, where the disc has been caught and you've got a confident player like Leslie with the disc in hand, they're able to immediately make that next move. And that's really what we saw. That happening so close to the defensive end zone uh, for Zodiac is huge for the Quokkas. They've brought it back to a two-point game. Yeah, yeah, such a good point for them. Also, maybe, you know, it's the, the another point they've scored against that zone. Have they figured it out yet? Are they going to keep running that zone against them? Only time will tell. But but, but definitely something that, that 
is Zev Fishman that the coach that, that the players in Zodiac are keeping in the back of their mind? You know, second point they've scored against it. Maybe they've unlocked it. Or maybe it's, you know, worth continuing to try to run, to, to put the pressure on. Regardless, Zodiac is on offense. Valenti is centering the disc, and Zodiac is seeing what they can do. And meanwhile, Quaka's with a junk zone of their own. And it's Mercer, Valenti, and Aisha really trying to anchor down that offense, threading through, finds Murray. Chips one forward to Bradley, looking for Parker. Got Johnson signaling for discs as they're picking apart the midfield, but the disc swings back between Aisha and Valenti, trying to work around that zone. We see that nice give go. Nice movement here. Mercer with the disc. They're quite patient, looking for options. I really like that. They're, you know, just finding the open players. Bradley. Back to Isha. Isha is starting to swing across. Mercer getting closed off. A nice little inside shot, but it comes out a little high. Valenti goes up anyway, comes down with it. It's going to drop back. Oh, sending yes. the big shot up, but who's it to? It turns over a little bit early. Looking for Lillian Parker in the end zone. Not going to come away with it this time. Some blade on that backhand kind of pulled it out. I think if it, if it were a bit more flat, it could have gone a bit farther into the hands of the receiver. Yeah, a, a tricky shot. Going to see Harris finding Hazir. Manages to somehow get that reset off the ground. Murray on defense. A pick has been called. We're seeing a lot of clusters of, of players. Uh, Valenti's pursuit of her uh, defensive or offensive counterpoint was impeded by the cuts of other players as they tried to evolve in the midfield. So players are just adjusting so that the next initiation won't cause another pick immediately. And a violation has been called. Players trying to move before the disc has been checked and made live. Counting and making sure everyone's on the same page. Harris up over Bradley. It's Hadzir now marked by Mercer. Goes around. Fakes inside. And we know that Zodiac here, it sounds like that they're switching up their force. We're hearing away, away, away. Indicating that communication from the sideline is chatting with the, the person on the mark to indicate where they should force. Nonetheless, Zodiac's on offense, though. Sounds like it was successful. Mercer with the disc looking for options. Over the top. Finds Aisha. Bradley signaling for the oh, back corner. Oh Unmarked. Is she going to get there? Not quite. A little bit too much angle on that throw. That's great vision. Tricky. Such good vision. Maybe uh, turning around and putting an outside, an outside backhand might have done the job as well. Yes. It's a great, great thinking. I mean, you can see uh, Bradley evolve that cut into the deep space. And if you've got it, put it. Uh, I mean, I, I rate that. I'd back that throw any time. That's not going to yeah. – I'm not going to – I'm not going to bench a player for making that. No. Um, I think I, I think it yeah I'd throw a hammer in that situation, curving across it. It's really hard to, to reel in that trailing catch. We've got Quakas on offense. It sounds like there's a violation. Uh, another stoppage. I mean I think I think you're right. I, like the the flight path of a hammer would have been perfect there. But as you can hear, uh, there's a wind kind of whipping up a little bit. I think it's coming to uh, from the far side of your screen towards the near side of your screen. So trying to throw that hammer is actually going to expose the underside, the sort of cup shape of the disc, to the wind. So it's going to be a little bit harder to push it out towards that far corner, particularly the further up it goes. So if you try and arc that shot up, that's what's going to cause a few problems. So right the way, we're seeing Quokka's really, really work the disc here, which is just amazing to see. A great That's high catch from Tan. Harris wide open. The disc turning over early, and Johnson says she's no. So fast. Oh, she's one of my faves. She was running there, and I was confused if there were wheels beneath her or feet turning over. Her acceleration and closing that distance is... Oh, looks like... Uh, as Michelle Lee took that bit of a tumble, is going to be an injury substitution. So we're going to see Hider take the field again. And last last game on the first day, you know, it's not a time when you want to be playing through any potential niggles. So, yeah, definitely I respect that that call to respect the body. Maybe maybe there's a cramp, but just making sure that, that you're, you know, you're playing well, you're physically there, and you're not pushing anything that, that's not there. I could be wrong, and it happens a lot. 
But I'm not sure if, if Michelle, uh, Michelle Lee's actually wearing cleats. I think she's been performing at the level that she has in sneakers. Wow. It's a little hard to tell. Uh, we've got Johnson with the disc now. Marked down by Chen. Finds Aisha as a reset. Back to Johnson. Some nice give and go movement. Oh, Bradley, Bradley tries for the one hand as she turns, continuing that look downfield. And it's just going to be that little bit of mistiming. Seeming to get the disc to Hider, who's going to hopefully put one more on the board. Winding up the big forehand. Murray aggressively shutting that down. Harris is open now. Hider gets the reset away. Back to Hider. I'm loving, we're seeing quite a few of this across both teams. The cut, pause, and then cut again. The the look from the handler and the fake, and then and then throwing again the same option to the same person during the second time. It's really a sneaky way to throw off defense. What a throw! Oh, putting a high Actually, disc up over Bianca Mercer Mercer. is a choice. And it's one that is going to pay off as he dares accuracy to Chin hitting the back end of the zone is going to bring them back within one. This is the Quantum Quarkers team that we really wanted to see. Yeah, just impressive again. I want to want to give some silence. I want to give a moment to that throw. So well placed. Again, Mercer is such a formidable defender. She, her wingspan is massive, and she's able to take so much out of the sky. So for he did to see that, to launch the throw, to place it just so it floats beyond that, and it's a safe, easy catch, you know? She doesn't have to jump up into the air to put herself into any strange situations to try to reel the disc in. It's such a safe and easy catch. What a throw. Now, getting to see that again in slow motion, a thing that stands out to me is just the sight lines of both of those players. So when we saw Chin cutting deep, out of her peripheral vision with just a slight head turn, she's going to see Hidea lining that shot up. Now, Mercer was very intent on marking Chin, and so she didn't actually see that that disc was coming, and so it was a little bit late to sort of be aware of that, which means maybe she would have been able to make a play on it, uh, but just the timing and the, the, the communication knowledge, the teamwork there on display by the Quokkas meant that that shot came up to a, a receiver who was anticipating it uh, as it's fading away from the defender who maybe is not. Uh, but a timeout has been called. It's a one-point game. We've got a cap of 13 points or 75 minutes. Some of these points have been stretching on quite a bit. They have Zodiac been. are first to break. And I think as a testament to that, it, it is really smart when points are dragging on, when you know half might not be actually at the halfway point of the game, but later on to recognize that and be calling these timeouts. They're there to be used. And, and when teams go an entire game without calling a timeout, they're... You know, either they're really in the flow or they're missing the opportunity to really revisit as a team, check in with everyone, either give everyone a quick breather or discuss a way they could be playing offense or a defensive strategy, a way to shut things down. So so really, I, I, I like to see that teams are using these timeouts right now, especially Blair, as you just mentioned, with these long points that we've seen. Yeah, I mean... As you say, Kelsey, those timeouts are meant to be used. I mean, if you don't take a timeout as an ultimate player, what you are is you're the kind of co-worker who eats their lunch at their desk and then chastises other people for actually taking their breaks. It makes you a slightly worse person. <laughs> um, so, so aside from a little PSA to take your government-mandated paid 15-minute breaks at work, um, take your timeouts when you've been really working hard with your team on the ultimate field. Uh, so we're going to see a Quokkas with a great long pull from Leslie one more time. Picked up by Zeng working with Ford. And I just also want to comment, you guys are probably aware of this. I am so focused on this game that I haven't noticed the score is 5-4 to four to Zodiac. Quokkas have done a fantastic job at closing that gap. Some you know, they, they, they came out a little bit slow right out of the gate, but they are firing now. Can they get that D in the right location? You know, they're, they're really making the connections. They have tightened up that score so much. Harris making a great play to get that one back in the hands of Quokkas. It's, it's not going to curve back in, just not quite enough. So Zodiac are going to have the disc, and they're actually not going to lose as many yards as it looked like they did. Just based on where the disc actually crossed the line. So Hidea is giving some a very, very courteous signal to indicate where Zen can bring the disc back in. I love the vision there. I mean, it was a turnover. I, I did appreciate the decision-making, though. It was a good option. 
Harhoff putting Lawson through the spin cycle, but it's going to be just enough. Puts what the blade up for Ford. If anyone was going to come down with that one, Julia Ford was. We've got up that, that tightening hold that Quokka's had growing. And, and with our game to 13, if Zodiac can score again, taking it to seven, that will be our halftime break. Uh, but again, considering the, the, the comeback train that um, the Quantum Quokkas have been boarding, they managed to put a bunch of points on the board. They're only a couple behind. They might be the ones to really pour on the gasoline, to really pour on the fire and, and stage a second stage comeback, uh, which would be fantastic to see, uh, keeping this game nice and close. I mean, Zodiac coming in, I believe, seeded first um, in, the, in the women's division. They're currently undefeated. We've seen Quantum Quokkas go one and one, uh, losing out to the Fresh Hops by a single point. Uh, Fresh Hops, there was a much wider margin there um, between them and Zodiac, which was a 13-7 game. So based solely on the on the sort of common opponent's experience, uh, it looks like the game is heavily in favor of Zodiac, but it's still ridiculously tight. Definitely. And and we saw Phoenix before when they went up against Babe Ladies from Wellington as in a really close game against them. Phoenix was showing some some really great poise, some patience, some throw just great job at throwing and catching. The basics, the fundamentals, putting things up, finding the players and, and getting open, some athletic plays too. So so that, that Christchurch Christchurch matchup, Phoenix against Quakas would would have been a showdown, but Exciting to see that the Quokkas would have come out on top, and, and now they're, they're coming back here. It's been great to see them breaking out of their shell a little bit, and some of the baubles have been holding them back. Can Eider hold on to it? No, that's another another bauble for the ground. Some great zone defense. We had Murray, Tennis, and Lee really mm. forcing the disc uh, backwards and forwards across the field. They forced a lot of passes, and it looked like Quokkas were able to string together a lot, uh, a lot of great connections. When they tried to sort of pressure it through the middle, he did got to it and had a couple of attempts for just the way that just came in was going to give it back to Zodiac so they might have an opportunity here to take half Aisha oh, fires to lead towards far sideline we see Quantum Quokkas pressuring with a match defense goes straight back to uh, Aisha there and Lim on the mark you, you know a tough mark but but really props to, to Aisha and her throwing ability sneaking the throws just under those arms Harhoff fakes the hammer engaging the swing Back to Aisha, who's really, she's really quarterbacking the defense right now. She's such a, a pivotal linchpin of, of, of the offense. Goes back to find Ding Larson. A reset around to Aisha, who's just doing such a fantastic, consistent work. Working, yeah. In that, in that Zodiac handler space. Goes wide to find Harhoff. A lot of space for Tinas. Nice vision. And Leslie making a great attempt at it. It's just out. Tries to find Murray, can't get that connection dialed in. So we're going to hopefully see that same zone defense again. And interesting to see, it's that it, it's hard to see really. When, when there's been so much hard work to dig at the disc where it is, and you need that one pass, that white line fever, that outside and backhand, really pushing it up the sideline, and it doesn't result in a point. It's sad to see. I'm stoked. You know, they've got another chance. They're, they're, they're running defense here, setting that intense zone on. Can they convert it and turn that into a point? He's going to say no, along with the rest of the Quokkas on the field right now. Finding those open options, trying to break past the zone. Well, we always say the few ways to break a zone really are to either go over the top of it with those scubas, those hammers, or go across the front of it enough times that the zone uh, starts to tire itself out. Mm -hmm. You can use four or even five players to combat that three up the front. Mm -hmm. And just solely by the fact that the disc moves faster than a player, you can just outpace the front half of the zone until they slow down enough to really open something up for nice. you, just like we're seeing that's here. It. Blair, you said it. That's it. I was waiting for it. It's so great to see that throw. And now that look at how much field they've opened up. Those those meters that they just gained from that. Such beautiful movement right now. Leslie to Camden to Hider reaches back for it. Oh no, you know, it's it's all good though. It's all good because such nice movement. She had it in her hands. It's a, it's a silly little mistake as we all make from time to time. But but what great zone offense they've played. Absolutely, we've got Hahoff with the disc now. 
marked by Lim. Trying to fake towards that backhand side. It's Aisha on an undercut. She's faking. So now Zodiac has a lot more field to make up, a lot, <laughs> a lot more yards to go through in order to score the point to get back to where they were before. Grinding through this last game of the first day. Harhoff with a disc and she launches it deep. A great way to make those yards again. But it's a turnover. A territorial play. It's going to give the disc back to Quantum Quarkers, but they've got a long field ahead of them. It's not going to stop them, though. We've seen Leslie. We've seen Hidair. Camden now as well getting involved. That same zone from Zodiac getting set up. We're going to have to see it one more time. They're working the disc, they're using the speed of the disc to get around the zone, just trying to drag them backwards and forwards across the field, hoping to tire them out. Some nice movement here. Again, so this is this is classic. This is what I'm so stoked to be watching. Those quick movement, the flow, making it making it difficult for Zodiac to to keep up. You know, how can you set the mark and set your zone when the disc is is moving so quickly? This is this is exactly I, I, I don't know, I think they found the key. What they needed to do from the get-go, they finally unlocked it. They're they're putting the puzzle pieces together and it's just these little baubles that are interrupting. Uh, such great flow between the players. Yeah, I mean, and but really, that's what a zone is trying to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it's it's sort of an exercise in statistics. Um, even if, I mean, what are your options, right? You either let them throw up a 50-50 throw, in which case you've got a 50-50 chance of success, or yeah. you let them take 10, 15, 20, 99% throws, and eventually those errors accumulate, and then they manifest as one of those uh, options there. But it's going to be Tennis with a great grab in the end zone there mm -hmm. gonna bring them to seven and take the first half for zodiac from auckland what a fantastic way to finish that point some amazing zone offense from quantum quark is on display though yeah. i don't want to take anything away from the amount of hard work that they just yes, displayed seeing both teams you know breathing heavily through that point the work that they've both left on the field while zodiac is taking half while the score is as it is i feel like they're really matching each other well and it's such a, a privilege to watch I mean, I don't know about you, but my heart rate's feeling a little bit elevated. So we're <laughs> going to take just a few minutes so that I can calm down so these teams can get some water in and resettle themselves for what is going to be a very, very exciting second half to conclude the first day of our coverage of the 2024 Division Two New Zealand Ultimate Championships brought to you by Ulti TV. If you like what you see, head on over to patreon.com slash Ulti TV. Give us your spare change. Your help allows us to continue bringing you the very best in Ultimate coverage here in New Zealand, Australia, and around the world. But to conclude our first half, my name is Blair Munro. I'm Kelsey Bielek. And we will be back with you very soon. Matewa. Oh, my God.
And welcome back for what is going to be the second half, the final half of our first day of coverage here at Bob Dean's Fields in Christchurch. We have Zodiac currently up by three facing off against the Quantum Quackers. A, a very close game, all things considered. I mean, that last point in particular, we saw the Quackers do some impressive zone offense against the Zodiac defensive side. Uh, just a couple of un unfortunate little bobbles, little drops that allowed the momentum to swing back the other way. But my name is Blair Munro. And I'm Kelsey Bielek. And it is a huge privilege for us both to be here, to be your eyes and ears on the ground, to provide you context and commentary for what many people, uh, most of them ultimate players, think is the best sport in the world. Um, proudly supported and brought to you by Alti TV. If you like what you see and you've got a little bit of spare change in your pocket, head on over to patreon.com slash TV. Please give us your support and allow us to continue bringing you the very best in Ultimate here in New Zealand, Australia, and around the world. Now, Blair, you were just saying best sport in the world, and I love to see the respect from coaches on the sideline as we can see there for fans dressing up for the event. Here we are at Div 2 National Championships and people dressing up. Again, either you're in uniform and you're representing your team or you're in the suit required, the, 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 
kit required to support from the sideline and look your darn best doing it. Uh, absolutely. I think, I mean, if Macklemore saw him, he'd be frothing. <laughs> we've got Zodiac now on offense, picking up immediately. And we've got Quokka's coming down, it looks like, in a junk defense. Match on the handlers. Hahoff cutting a little Ooh. bit close and allowing Chin to get involved there. But it's going to be Ng now finds Bartle. Uh, far sideline, pushing with Eng again. He did, trying to get involved, trying to shut down the play. Eng running the play right now. Oh, a little slip from Martel. I mean, she's not going to be able to get a hand to it, so it's going to go back to the Quokkas. We're going to see Hider working with Leslie. And pushing straight through to Chen. Really good to see. I know earlier in the season, you know, we're, we like to think we're past COVID, but I know there were a few players, Martel included, who were taken out by COVID briefly and, and was struggling with a, with a few of the after effects, you know, kind of trying to get back into it. So really good to see that she's not only back into it, but also in, as I mentioned before, a position where she's chasing the disc. She's one of the most active players on the field on defense right now um, and has pushed past those lingering issues that, that, you know, that took her out briefly with COVID. What a great Great catch. little catch over there. The little half slide, half layout move to keep the disc off the turf. Great work by Leslie. We're going to see Chin now as the defense starts to close the trap. Goes to Harris, goes to Hidea, far sideline. And, and Leslie, she's putting on a show for us this game. She's really been digging deep and, and making a lot of those plays, working with players like Hidea there, with Silva, with... Um, uh, with, with the Serville, yeah. pa pardon me. And what a, a finish to that point. That was absolutely beautiful. And a reception by Nadi Hadzir. Just some fantastic work there. This is exactly what we were talking about when we said that uh, the Quantum Quackers were playing some fantastic mm. zone offense. That's what we were talking about. Just that great effort moving backwards and forwards, using the width. The disc is always going to move faster than the players. So by the time you one, two, pass the disc across the width of the field, your zone uh, defense, that cup in the front, is going to be maybe half of the way there uh, before you throw it back. And now you've given something, something, something else to react to. So you're slowly adding cumulative physical and mental fatigue until something opens up. You get a gap just wide enough in the front of that zone. I think we just saw that there. Um, where it was, I, I think it may have been Leslie who just threaded one right through the middle and then mm. it was bing, bing, and then a huge hammer over the top. Just what a fantastic play. Yeah, Kiara Chin, you know, she's going to go home today. And, and if she remembers anything, I think it's going to be that, that beautiful hammer over and finding that open player in the end zone. Blair, you said it before with the zone. You know, if you can't go through it, if you can't go under it, you know, what is subterranean ultimate, you got to go over or around. And here, Chin is showing us exactly, you know, the throws that she has in the back pocket, that the team has in the back pocket, to go over and make that clean point. Love to see that point for Quantum Quokkas. So the score is now 7-5, still in favor of Zodiac. The pull goes high and catches a little bit of wind, so it doesn't gain a lot of distance down the field. It's going to land in the Quantum Quokkas defensive half. We're going to see Ford and Aisha picking up. We have Bradley calling for a vertical stack, building up. It was originally going to be a side stack. It looked like we were going to have uh, Crystal Kane um, getting involved as an isolation cutter. They look to have reorganized uh, that plan, and the disc comes a little bit high over the top of Amy Lee's hand, so it's going to give the disc back to the Quokkas. Are they going to be able to bring it within one? We're seeing match defense now from Zodiac. Lawson with the disc. She's looking for the open side, and then there's a cut from the front of the stack from Tan. Tan looking again. She swings it. There's De Serval. Going to get a read on it. De great catch. Oh, she's such a force on the field. And another pick has been called. Some conversations on the field just clarifying where people are and the disc is in. De Serville. Working with Lawson. Nice movement. Tatan far sideline gets a bite out of Bradley. Decides not to go for the immediate upline. Just civil with just a whip grab out of the sky. It's Good great. grief. Can I get her autograph after this? <laughs> Let's walk over later, Blair. Sign my disc. <laughs> <laughs> great work. To civil again just conquering that midfield space. Uh, Tan with an outstretched hand. 
pressure from Bradley. Hot. Yeah, as you mentioned before, we've got a, a bit of a laser show. Is it? Is, yeah, it just comes in a bit too hot. And so Aisha now supported by Mercer finds Johnson. Kane on a great undercut, slips past the serval, puts one it. over the top. Oh, no, and the same pl plague, the same air is plaguing. Zodiac there, the disc coming in too hot, too fast, too furious. As a laser, it's hard to hold on to them. Yeah, a little bit too much edge on that, so it finds Lee, but just with the angle of that, it's going to kind of tip out of her hands. So we're going to see what happens now as Lawson seeks to fight back the other way. Another great cut by DeServal, picked up by Kane on the far sideline. Great defense from Aisha means it's not going to go through. Ooh, what Kane's a... Position, but Johnson with the block, just shutting it down. Some great work there, hoping to initiate the possession that is going to see. Ford. That's He's a bookends for Nisha Johnson. Well done. What an absolute champ. I'm a huge fan of Nisha Johnson uh, when she and I played on um, Euphoria's uh, mixed team in their first season. Wow, no need we, to brag, Blair, that you played yeah, with players in that right? caliber. I know, I know. <laughs> Balling out. Um <laughs> And it's one of those things we operated under a buddy system, and I was just, it was just such a delight to have a player like Nisha as my buddy. Like We just hyped each other up, and she makes plays like that so consistently. Um, just has amazing field awareness as well. It's really, really good to see. She hits constantly on a swivel. She's really making great defensive plays. Um, she's always looking for opportunities to help, and yet she's never leaving her defender to do so unless it's a guaranteed thing. So... Uh, I always like to talk about a sphere of influence. Um, so the imagine you imagine sort of a ball around a player, uh, and a disc moving into that ball means they can make a play on it. They can pick up a player on it. And and Nisha has a surprising, like an almost um, deceptively large sphere of influence. So she can cover a lot more ground than you think she can, mm. and gets to make plays like that, putting a bookends on the board and taking Zodiac within five of a victory. Also, I want to comment on Julia Ford's throw there. It looks like she could have been doing something as simple as putting a plate on the table. It was it was effortless, the way she released that, but the power and the precision behind it. It was it was a beautiful execution. It was, it was such a nice throw. Ding Larson with the pull. Zodiac on defense, and they are marking match, person defense. I think a recognition of... Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the great job that Quokkas have been doing in, in slicing open the zone and making those throws and catches. Also just potentially switching things up towards the end of the game. Parker with the disc. Back to Harhoff. Gets a foot flash out of Lee, but manages to find Martel far sideline oh, with a big right. backhand. Looking for Parker. Slightly overcooked on that one. Get out of the gym. <laughs> Just such a strong, powerful throw, but it is going to get the disc back to Quokkas. We're going to see Hider go to pick up the disc and initiate. We're seeing a vertical stack start out for the Quokkas. Seeing Amy Lee start up at the very back of the zone. Probably going to be an early cut. Um, similarly, we see Chin. We see uh, Silva uh, in that space as well, and Amanda Lim. So there's a lot of great athleticism here for the Quokkas offensive line. We'll see whether or not they're able to make something good from it. He did assessing the fields and throws it down. We've seen Lee take to the ground to try to reel in these undercuts, but but yeah, not quite getting a hand on them. Harhoff now engaging the reset, looking for options. Ing, the trusty, trusty receiver in any situation, fires it wide to the open side to Parker, who launches a hammer. That's is a challenging catch to make, Blair. That absolutely is. I mean, it's one of those things now, I don't, I don't often like to draw attention to these sort of things, but Taranaki Thunder um, playing in the Division II Mick Championship last year. Um, what ended up happening, Taranaki Thunder, I believe, lost that game on Universe Point, and it was it was relating to, uh, to Jenny Parker getting a little bit of, of end zone fever with a hammer throw that ended up going awry. And seeing the arc of that throw, um, I honestly, I was expecting, I was fearing even for a repeat of that incident. But seeing Ng in hot pursuit just getting underneath it, uh, I probably shouldn't have worried at all. It's ridiculous. So the score is now 9-5. to five. We've just had our soft cap, and I think we've hit that after that point was concluded so if my understanding is correct we need to conclude this point 
add one to the highest score at the conclusion of this point, and then it is a race to that number. So if Zodiac can score here, their score will be 10. We add one to 10, and then it is a race to 11. So there's still a chance that the Quantum Quackers can walk away with the victory, although the door is slowly closing on them. Only time will tell, but as you say, there is limited time now. I mean, the clock's been ticking since we started the game, but now it's especially precious, especially yes, especially if the Quantum Quackers want to make that comeback that they need. It's got to be boom, 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 point, point, point. And that looks like it's touchdown inbounds. It's Leslie picking up early, finds Harris, supported by Hider, trying to use the width, but there's a drop there, so this could be what we need. Bradley running past Zing, looking to pick up, supported by Aisha Valenti. Mercer puts a shot up, finds Johnson. Can't get the assist because of the long limbs of Harris. Goes again anyway, yes. and Aisha oh. comes down with it over to Serville. Serville was what there. a phenomenal. She has wheels on her, the legs, and she was What there. a phenomenal play. Phenomenal play. Love to see that, you know, and, and, and while it resulted in the point, the fantastic play by the defense just to you know put it all out there not to watch it happen and passively see it happen knowing that that, that she can't get there but to serve running through she she did it. get a touch on it too that My was the thing goodness. it was dead clean up until the point where you see the servo flash in front and then the disc is wobbling and i think just Aisha maybe anticipated that it was going to happen and just kept a hand lower for the disc to sort of fall into. Mm. That's one of the things that it's in every, pretty much every slow-mo that you'll see if you troll through Instagram for long enough. You'll see great layout blocks where they get a fingertip to the disc and then it falls out of a narrow window that the receiver had created for themselves based on how close their hands were. So Aisha just maybe recognizing that, kept the hands a little bit wider to give a bigger basket for that yeah. disc to fall into, which is just, it's, it's really sort of brilliant awareness. Now, Absolutely. For Aisha as a receiver, incredible catch. Yeah, just so fantastic. And so this is... This is potentially the last point the Zodiac, well, I mean, it is the last point the Zodiac want to play. Uh, Quokka's six points ahead of them and if I, they want to win this game. They want to. I mentioned it before. I will mention it again, Blair. Zodiac, they're coming out on defense right now. So if they want to score this point, aside from scoring Callahan, the only way you can score a point is offensively. So this means that Zodiac needs to grind through this defense. They need to shut it down. They need to result, turn it into a turn. And then they need to play flawless offense to score. So they've got, they've got that road ahead of them, which while it is long, is not the extra six points that Quantum Quonkas need to put on the board, which they can do if they're going to dig deep, but now is the time when they need to do that. So here we, they, we see them. They're playing their classic zone, zone offense, swinging the disc, finding those open options. I want to see them maintain it. I want to see them keep finding the options, keep, keep making those catches, the easy available options to them. Yeah, and so that same offensive core for the Quonkas, we've got... Leslie, Hider, Lawson, and then facing off against them, those three defensive players that have been really the cornerstone of that zone defense. Mm -hmm. We've got Tinas, Makar, and Parker doing a lot of running backwards and forwards. We're going to see whether or not the, re the exemplary zone offense that we've seen on display from the Quantum Quarks is going to be enough. They've pushed the disc back quite far. This defensive zone is, I mean, th they've pushed, they're losing yards, if anything, right now. They're, they're struggling. There we go. Hyder pushing. Oh, sorry, he did pushing it through. The one, the one thing I'd like to really draw attention to, and it's a bit of a thankless job playing defense, but the second line of this zone is doing a fantastic job as well. When that front cup, those front three aren't able to be in position, we can see uh, Hahoff there was really pulling across to mark out Silver so that there were no open continuation cuts. That's the thing. A person with the disc in isolation can't really do anything. So... If you can't target that player, targeting the player that they're going to throw to is the next best move. And our second line in the Zodiac defense is doing exactly that. So the zone is working as it's intended. It's really forcing a lot of passes. I'm starting to lose track. It goes a little bit high, looking for Tarn, manages to find it. And it looks like it's been called too far out. Parker calling a stoppage. It's Tarn making the argument that she's towed yeah. that one in. So did she catch it? with both feet how did how did that happen oh, you know if this is a turnover you hate to see it happen like that well it's one of those things though i mean the the reset shot from he looking for 
uh, Tan. It came out with that nose up. And remember that our wind, while it's been pretty stable for most of the day, is a now consistent far side to near sideline. Mm. So throwing into the wind, it's going to catch the underside of the disc and lift it up, which is why it probably had more distance on it than she thought. Mm. And that meant that when Tan came down with it, she was out of bounds. And so it is going to be a turnover. We've got an opportunity here as Ford gets the recenter from Mercer. Back to Mercer, working with Parker, getting the separation. But we're going to see a pick being called. Harhoff communicating with the offense, sorry, with, with the defense, just letting them know where she was. Great comms on the field, just talking through kind of what the issue was. I, you, normally with picks, you just make the adjustments. Let's see one more time. Hmm. And this so. It's with Jenny Parker, with Hider on the mark. Parker looking for Ford, finding Harhoff. Some great scrambling defense, and another pick has been called. I think a lot of the Zodiac offenders in their uh, downfield space really trying to be squirrely, trying to be active, but maybe not committing because they're recognizing that each of those cuts are kind of trying to cut each other off. So this would be a great time. I mean, you can't really do it during a sort of a stoppage, um, but recognizing an isolation play would be a great opportunity here. And we're seeing Eng with a huge separation from Tan. Leslie eventually managing to close in. Working back, we've got Ford midfield. Puts one through to Parker. Can she close it out? Yes, she can. It's Maycar yes, with the disc can. to close the game out in favor of Zodiac yeah. from Auckland. And great movement on the break side there to, to open it up. It's really difficult to defend on the break side, especially when you're out of position. You know, when the disc goes up the break side and you're broken and, and, and all of a sudden there's just this string of throws open to you. So there we are. Parker, she's wide open and defense is struggling to adjust, but it's difficult to defend once that break side throw has it's happened. A, it's a really, really hard thing to defend, Kelsey. Mm -hmm. Not just uh, because you're out of position as a defender, but also because the short nature of the passes when you're that close to the end zone really dictate how much time you have to get back into position if we were trying to tr if we were to stretch that same throw out over 40 or even you know 45 50 meters there's going to be enough time for an aggressive defender to get into a better position and make a play mm -hmm. when you're looking over 10 or even five there just isn't that amount of room and zodiac recognized that and they used it to secure an unbroken record for day one of the tournament as they are four and oh a fantastic performance from our top seeded women's team uh, that concludes our first day of coverage at the 2024 division two new zealand ultimate championships here at bob dean's field in beautiful sunny and only now slightly windy or <laughs> totahi my name as always is blair munro I am Kelsey Bielek. And with the support of Ulti TV and Christchurch Ultimate, we thank you very much for watching, and we will see you again for the next one. Matewa.